Welcome to the Lady Transcend channel. I've lived in Florida over 20 years. If you're thinking about moving to Florida, be sure you watch this video to the end as you don't want to miss any critical information which may help you to make the right decision during the hurricane season. I experienced many hurricanes in Florida last 20 years. Last two hurricanes, Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Ian, I was witnessing in Sarasota. Hurricane Ian went through Sarasota just nine months ago. During both of these hurricanes, I stayed at home with my family and our two dogs. Both times, I wish we left the town. Although we did not have a direct hit, both hurricanes had damaged our roof, lanite screen, and landscape. Both times, we had power outages for several days. Now, I will describe in details witnessing Hurricane Ian in Sarasota, Florida, and I will show you the damages my community still has nine months later. My family started preparation for the hurricane a couple of days after Hurricane Ian was formatted and recognized as a very powerful storm. First days of preparation, we got extra food and water. We filled our cars with gas. It's a good idea also to fill an extra gas container, just in case. Most of gas stations are out of gas in days of approaching hurricane. We did not own a house generator, so I started making large blocks of ice. Of course, you can purchase regular ice cubes, but large blocks of ice stay frozen much longer. So I would pour water into the plastic food containers and place them in our spare freezer. When the ice becomes completely solid, I transfer it from plastic containers to the multiple coolers. You can also add a good amount of ice to your freezer and your freezer will act as a cooler for a while when you lose power. So on September 27, 2022, Hurricane Ian made its initial landfall as a Category 3 storm in Cuba. At this time, the projection of the further landing was not very clear and we hesitated if we should put our window shadows or not. Most newer houses in Florida come with manufactured aluminum window shadows. They're pretty heavy, bulky, and have sharp edges. We were not looking forward to installing them, as we still remember the pain of doing that the previous Hurricane Irma. If you decided to use the metal shadows, be very careful and wear the protective gloves. Or better, find a company who will do it for you. On September 28, 2022, as the Hurricane Ian strengthened to a Category 4 storm and made landfall west of Fort Myers, my husband and I started frantically to put the hurricane shadows on our windows. As we were working hard for hours, we were listening to the important updates on our phone about the two possible projections of approaching monster hurricane with a strength of 155 miles per hour, just two miles per hour shy of reaching category five classification. One of these projections was the eye of the storm was supposed to go directly through Sarasota. We got seriously worried. We were debating if we should stop working on our window shadows, get in the car and drive away. The question was where to drive, as the projections of the storm could change. We also had two senior dogs with the health issues on our hands, and we really did not want to make them uncomfortable, more by trying to drive with them somewhere. Some more proactive people in our neighborhood already had installed their shadows a day or two early and had driven away. At this point, it was too late for us to drive somewhere. A lot of people who left their houses driving away from hurricanes got stuck for many hours in traffic. It could be dangerous being on the road if you left too late. Most of our neighbors who decided to stay were outside finishing their last preparations. Our new neighbors, who we didn't know much, asked us if we need help to secure our shadows since we were slightly behind schedule. We knew we could finish ourselves with our windows before the dark, and we declined their generous offer. 
So those two strong men helped other families with the same task. Facing the approaching natural disaster, our community got united like never before. At times of danger, you can really see the true generous hearts who quietly live nearby. So before it got dark, we finished barricading our windows and doors with the metal shadows. We only left undone one small back door so we could leave the house through the lanai when we needed. We already had lost our electricity and I placed the multiple flashlights and the safe candles throughout the house. In our master bedroom, we hang them on chandeliers. We also remember this time to get a radio. During the previous Hurricane Irma, we did not have a radio because we relied on our iPhones. But when the iPhone tower went down, we could not use the internet on our phones and could not research the situation of an approaching storm. Our dogs did well during the storm. They slept most of the time. They were so old and deaf, they could not hear the scary noise coming from outside. In the middle of the night, the wind was getting more and more terrifying. The metal shadows on two of our windows were coming out, and they were hitting the windows pretty hard. We were afraid it could break the glass at the our window at any moment. But after Hurricane Irma, we purchased weatherproof film, which did help. The weatherproof film is supposed to withhold a strong wind, but not if the tree branch flies into your window. After one very strong gust of wind, one of our metal shadows took off and flew across the lake behind our house. A second later, I heard a noise of breaking glass. I assume the storm shadows hit somebody's window across the lake. I was praying it did not hurt anyone. Around sunrise, worst part of the Hurricane Ian was over for us. A few hours later, people started to get out the houses, talking to the neighbors and assessing the damages Ian left behind. At first glance, it did not look so bad except for disturbing landscape. We did not see our roof damage till later. We were worrying about my husband's parents because we could not reach them on the phone. The phones stopped working during the worst time of the hurricane, and that morning we still could not reach them. So we drove to their neighborhood. The ride to their neighborhood was difficult because the road was covered with broken trees and power poles. Parents were doing fine, but they lost six of their big trees, mostly the oak trees, and they had a broken cage and torn screen of their lanai. Sarasota did not have a direct hit as was expected. Instead, Hurricane Ian went east, crossing Florida and leaving catastrophic damages behind. Port Charlotte, Fort Myers, Naples were not very lucky. Sanibel Island got completely cut off. Hurricane Ian claimed over a hundred human lives and caused between $40 billion and $70 billion in total damages, according to final estimate from CoreLogic. Many homeowners had regular home insurances, not flood insurances, and they had to carry the financial burden of their home damages. The uninsured flood loss is estimated to be between $10 billion and $17 billion. These are pictures I just took a couple days ago. So, nine months after Hurricane Ian passed, people in our neighborhood still waiting for their home insurance to pay for their roofs. Some people getting a new roof and some just repairing it. Even if your insurance will pay for your new roof, you still have to pay the insurance deductible, which was 15000 we had to pay. After insurance agrees, to pay for your roof, which is a long and painful process, it also takes six to eight months to get the order of new tiles for your new roof. So a lot of homeowners will be waiting for a while, and meanwhile, 
Their houses have a blue color on the roof, as you see on these pictures I took. Despite the hurricane season, I still love to live in Sunshine State all year long. If you're interested in detailed description of the pros and cons of living in Florida or Sarasota, Florida, be sure you click on the links of the videos below. Or even better, you could subscribe to this channel to see all of my videos. Thank you for listening. Until next time.